communities of persons with disability. Like I say, you're welcome. Welcome to my world where disability is not inability. And welcome to the Helping Hand TV show. You have to demonstrate your abilities. I have to be extra careful yeah. to make sure that I don't do anything that my failure will be linked with what? My uh, disability. My success should rather uplift. Yeah. Yeah. and bring ability to my disability. Amazing. That is what my focus is. So persons with disability, the time to remain in our rooms are far gone. So this is why we do this show, to bring dignity to disability, to bring hope to those who are hopeless. Hello and welcome to another um, interesting edition of the Helping Hand TV show. Um, today's edition is very, very special and I have a very special guest. And we are going to talk about someone very, very special. I'll go for a commercial break. When I come back, I'll introduce you to my guest and introduce you to what we are going to talk about today. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen, you are with me, the voice of ability on the air for persons with disability. And today I want to introduce you to someone with so much ability. Some people call her the greatest friend. Others call her the sweet companion. And others still call her the faithful worker. She is dependable, reliable, and adorable. And she's committed to lending you a helping hand anytime, anywhere. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Help me welcome DV Cleaners. <laughs> DV Cleaners Alata Samuna Shower Gels. DV Cleaners Aloe Vera Shower Gels. DV Cleaners Body Lotions. DV Cleaners Hair Shampoos. DV Cleaners Hair Conditioners. DV Cleaners Liquid Detergents. DV Cleaners Hand Wash. DV Cleaners Floor Cleaners. DV Cleaners Toilet Cleaners. DV Cleaners Cake Soaps. And now introducing DV Cleaners Hand Sanitizers. For bulk purchase, call us on plus 233-278-308-246 or plus 233-244-467-326. DV Cleaners, one of the top most made in Ghana products. DV Cleaners, proudly Ghanaian. And so remember that anytime you purchase any of the DV Cleaners range of products, you are lending a helping hand to a person with disability and you are supporting H4P organization's special advocacy for persons with disability. DV Cleaners! Nature's finest touch! Special edition on the Helping Hand TV show. This is a very special edition because um, we are honoring the memory of my late mom, Mrs. Christina Ananswa Hackman. If you are to describe a lady, what words would you use? Very beautiful. She was a lovely lady. She was funny, loving, caring. Always smiling, very intelligent, jovial, welcoming anybody who came her way. She was kind, she was generous, and she was caring. Amongst us were six uh, girls. Okay. And she was the prettiest. She felt free sharing whatever she had with people. She was generous with everything she had. She was always willing to give. She really gave beyond um, what one would expect. Baby was a jewel God gave us. And God used her to teach us, I think, lessons. Yeah. We'll cherish her memories forever. I mean, she cannot be replaced. You know, and, and she'll remain in our, in our hearts forever. Babu has left a, a huge legacy. Yeah. We are honoring the memory of my late mom, Mrs. Christina Ananswa Hackman. A real woman of virtue, Mrs. Christina Hackman. <laughs> Welcome back. Yeah, welcome back. You're yeah, with me, the voice of Ability and for Persons with Disability. Um, this is the special edition of the Helping Hand TV show. We are honoring the memory of Mrs. Christina Hackman. Um, and I have a very, very special guest um, with me. Um, I'll let her introduce herself 
then I'll try and play a bit of mischief, mm. then you'd enjoy the whole discussion. Um, you're welcome, madam. Thank you. <laughs> Please, can you introduce yourself? <laughs> hmm. I'm Juliana Messi Anderson. Mm. My husband was a reverend minister. His passed away mm. almost two years ago. And the senior sister of Mrs. Christina Ananswa Hackman. Now my mischief. So, um, you are the one I call my mother. Um, can you explain to us why? Oh. <laughs> I think it's because when you were a small boy, tiny boy, you were spending your holidays with me in Cape Coast. I was then teaching at Wesley Girls High School. And your mommy brought you to me the moment school vacated <laughs> so that at least you'll be free to do her work. And you enjoyed staying with me. So then reopening, she would come for you. So almost all your holidays were yeah. spending with me. And, and you have been my mother throughout. <coughs> Today we are honoring the memory of um, baby. You are called the historian amongst your siblings. Let's start with that. How did you get that um, name? Uh, I think it's because my memory can go back mm. a few years to incidents that happened in the family. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Okay. So let's start with the names. Um, baby has several names. Um, baby, Mill. That, yeah. That's the most interesting one for me. <laughs> Mill. You call her Mill. Why do you call her Mill? <laughs> I call her Mill because when she was very little, mm. tiny baby, and we started calling her a baby. Because she was a baby, we <laughs> called her a baby. Kids around us would come. Actually, she was very beautiful, mm. very beautiful when she was a baby, mm. very beautiful. So the children enjoyed playing with her, mm. and her teeth had started coming also. Mm -hmm. And the children would put the finger in and say, baby, come, baby, come. <laughs> and this particular boy didn't know how to say the baby, so he say, Mel, come, Mel, come. Okay. So Mel, come became her name. <laughs> so we were calling her Mel, come, Mel, come, and then later we were calling her Mel, Mel. That's how we have that name. You think they come milk. from there? Yes. <laughs> the milk comes from milk. Um, let's talk about baby. If, if you are asked to describe baby, what words would you use? She was a lovely lady. Mm. A very lovely baby. Jovial. <laughs> Welcoming anybody who came her way. Mm. And you can't go to her house and live without taking something with you. At least you have something to eat. If not, you have something to drink. Mm. Very lovely. And always smiling. Always smiling. Even when she was in pain, she wouldn't show it. She would smile. Occasionally when I ask her, I say, oh, ask for the pain. It depends on why baby are room. <laughs> because the surgery mm. done on her, didn't touch that part, that caused a problem. Okay. So the pain was there constant. Mm. But she was always smiling. You would see her sad or showing that she was in pain. No, she would never. She would always smile. I've always been fascinated by the fact that um, she started class one at three years, is it? Three? three and a half. Three and a half. How is that possible? Three and a half. What was she even saying, let alone? <laughs> Start class one. At at the time children started school at six six plus. Mm. We had just moved to why she started school at three and a half. We had just moved to uh Kujokrum from Kedi. Okay. And we lived between two small towns, Kujokrum and Keton. My father worked with the gunnery was okay. so the way we put it was between Keton and Kujokrum and so we lived in between. And uh, because my mommy was carrying the one guy after her, she had to go or pull her with her wherever she went to. So my, as soon as we got there, my, fa my father said, oh, she will have to start school. Not to start formally, but to be around so that my mommy will be free. Okay. So she started school at three and a half, if I can say that. Okay. And she never stayed in the classroom. 
she'll be walking around, playing pranks. The one after me, uh, Sammy, was in class six then. Mm. And she would run to her classroom window and call him by names and run away. <laughs> we go to Sadina's place and all over the place. She was, she was all over the place, three and a half. <laughs> by the end, at the end of the academic year, my daddy had her report. She had been promoted to class two. I said, no, I didn't have send her to school. I said she should just hang yeah. around. <laughs> they said, oh, but she has passed. She wrote the exam, she did everything, not knowing that this few minutes she stayed in the classroom, she got something. She was learning. Wow. We didn't know. To us, she was just walking around. But she was learning. But she was an intelligent girl. So Very most of the classmates were older than her? Oh yes, they were six, six plus. Wow. And she was three and a half. <laughs> so that's how she started school. So they kept pushing her, class two, class three, class four. Then class four, we had moved to Kumasi. Mm. So she went to school at KO. Uh -huh. So she was in class four, Braku was in class five, Sadana was in class six. And uh, so, very intelligent. Mm. She was working, working very hard. And we were surprised at her age. And was the she work, smallest? Uh, slightly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then when she go to middle school at Asamasi Girls, that's where the girls' school is. Okay. Mm. So when she got there, uh, Form 1, mm. Form 2, you look on trans, go on trans, you start in Form 2. Form 2, she had come for money to register. Because the teachers had, my father said, no, she's too young, so too. And the teachers would register, would pay and register her. She would write the common and trans <laughs> and pass. My father said, no, she's too young to start the secondary school. Mm. Form 3, the same thing. She didn't go. The teachers would pay, and my father said, no. Later, she would go and refund them, their money to them. Wow. Uh -huh. So Form 2, she had to, he refunded the money, Form 3 too. Then Form 4. Form 4 is middle school living certificate. Okay. So she wrote the exam, she passed, she passed the common entrance too, and then she went to Skandi College. <laughs> Skandi College because all we girls went to Skandi College. Okay. My first sister, Fosti, mm. went to Skandi College. Okay. So naturally, I also followed. Okay. Sister so Diana followed. Okay. And baby too followed there. Does it mean that um, Majo and Mama Ma also went to Skandi College? No, they didn't. They Why? went to Wesley Girls because you I was there be. and we felt Sekendi Sekendi is far from Bisiasi because my parents were at Bisiasi. Mm. So they went to Wesley, Wesley Girls. Girls okay. They did the common entrance, they passed. Mm. They didn't get them because of me. Okay. They passed the common entrance. So um, baby was supposed to reset even though she had passed. The father said he wouldn't let her go on. How did she feel? Because so far we've not heard anything about her no, side. To her, she, she, she was felt okay. She, she was okay with it. Mm. She didn't grieve. She was okay with it. Because my daddy said, you are too young, so mm. wait. So she obeyed him. Wow. Yes. I, I have been told about how jovial she was. So I'm going to go for a break. When I come back, I'm going to ask um, my auntie, um, Mrs. Anderson, to share some fun moments um, she's had with baby. Um, it's a Helping Hand TV show, special edition. We are honoring the memory of Mrs. Christina Hackman. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. sweet mother 
nothing could have prepared me for this moment and no one could have equipped me for this moment. My dear mother, may God keep you in the best places in heaven because you were God's best gift to me on earth. Rest well, my sweet mother. Rest well in the loving embrace of our Heavenly Father because you are the most loving earthly mother. God bless you for everything you did for me. Baby, my sweet mother, rest in peace and rise in glory. Welcome back. You're yeah, welcome back to the special edition of the Helping Hand TV show where we are honoring the memory of Mrs. Christina Hackman. And I have a very, very special guest. Um, my mother, um, Mrs. Juliana Anderson, thank you so much for your time. Um, one of the things I admire about the Andor family um, is how closely knit you are. Um, is it due to your parents? Is it due to your Christian beliefs? Is it because you are, you are really closely knit? Tell me, how did that happen? Mm, I think it's because of our parents and our upbringing. Okay. Home and church. Okay. We're, so that's, we're very religious. You mm. can't be in a house and not go to church Sunday morning and evening, mm. weekdays, and then prayer practices, and mm. I think that too helped okay. because we're all in the church mm. and we're going for um, prayer practices and so on. And my mommy was a baker then, mm. so we all be around helping her. Mm. I think that too made us close knit, okay. uh -huh. and you wouldn't just get up and go anywhere you like. You have to ask permission. Mm. And at times, in going out, you may go with the, one of the small ones. Uh -huh. <laughs> For security reasons. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also, our friends too were welcome to okay. our home. Okay. So I remember when I was in the secondary school, holidays, our mates would come. Mm. The girls were mostly in Accra. It's only the Ashanti boys. So they, they would be coming home and they would hang around mm. with us. And, but you dare not stand outside the house with the fellow. You have to you be have to home, bring them home with the one. Wow. And I think, and so my f siblings knew my niece and they also knew my siblings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's start with um, Baby. I hear Baby was um, selling some of the bread that um, my grandmother um, used to bake. Mm -hmm. But the Baby I know is so generous soft-hearted was she not giving the bread out for free no she couldn't <laughs> have done that because my mommy counted okay. the bread she was to sell okay and when she came she had to check okay what she had sold most of the time she sold everything wow. most of the time and especially when she was annoyed she didn't want to sell and uh, she will go, and that will be the day everything will get finished. And she'll oh. come home. I know that she has sold everything. <laughs> she felt, uh, or she thought she would bring the rest home f to annoy my mommy. Mm. But she sold everything. She sold everything. Mm -hmm. And whenever she was angry, I mean, she said, oh, who will be fair? And she'll be forced to smile. Mm. <laughs> I, I know of a story about baby having a sore on the leg. Um, let's get into some of those fun moments. That particular story um, is interesting. She was hiding it from the mother. What happened? I think she was around two years or so then. We were at Kedi. Okay. And one of the uh, our neighbors mm. saw a sore on her leg. said, ah, baby, no one is that trauma. <laughs> so, oh, Ma says, she doesn't feel fine when dressing it when it's small. So when it's big, when you can big, she was, she was always hiding it. Mom said, okay, hide it. When it's big, 
and I dress it, I feel okay. So you continue okay. to hide it. Mm -hmm. That's how she told the woman, oh, my mommy says, when it's big. Oh. <laughs> she doesn't like dressing small souls. Oh. She likes dressing big souls. That's how she took it. <laughs> and my daddy's other brother, yeah. once I say, my mommy wasn't in the house. Mm. So he asked her, baby, ma were him. <laughs> she didn't know she had given him the answer. So he always asked baby sense that would make her give the answer. And they would say, oh, men can't throw. Men can't throw. Man, you home, men can't throw. <laughs> she was very interesting when she was a small kid. So baby, um, where did the name come from? Oh, when she was tiny. Mm. And I think it's a Catholic father. She was passing. She knew when my mommy was pregnant. Okay. So when she delivered, I said, how is the baby? And so, fine. How is the baby? I said, that's how the name baby came. So we were always all calling her baby. Mm. I want to move on to a um, baby's first marriage. Can you tell us a bit about that? Uh, baby got married to Lieutenant Dan. Ni da ko kufi. Okay. Actually, they were schoolmates and classmates. Oh, okay. Baby started form one, school, but he joined the school. Okay. And they became friends. Okay. And when they finished this form, he joined the army. Okay. Baby, instead of during the holidays, I went to Accra with her to work, vacation work. I was at local government, and she was with Game and Wildlife. Okay. So when school reopened, instead of continuing to the university, <laughs> the one she wanted to marry was in the army, mm. and he would be coming out, working. Mm. And she felt, mm, 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 mm. no, I also work. I'd rather work than go to the... But I felt because she had tasted money. Okay. Okay. <laughs> she felt uh -huh, uh, continuing with her work. Okay. What was her reaction the first time she told you she has somebody she wants to get married to? Uh, I knew they were friends. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't surprised mm. when he said to marry. Was he a good person? I didn't know much about him. Okay. I didn't know much about him. But she said he was a good fellow. And the few times we met, I knew he would be good okay. for her. Yeah. Okay. Also jovial and handsome <laughs> young man <laughs> like the sun. <laughs> there is a story that every birthday of mine, baby tells me. And the story is about you um, when baby was due to um, give birth to me. You were supposed to go and pick a car and then um, what happened? <laughs> it was in August, and it was her long back, okay. so she had come to. Uh, the ag agreement was that, or the arrangement was that, I should be with her mm. till school reopened, then my mommy would take up, and okay. I would go back to Cape Coast. What was she living by then? Pick Farm. Pick Farm. She was at Pick Farm. Okay. So, when the time was due, I took her to 37, the little hospital. Okay. And when we got there, I had to rush home to bring a few things. Okay. So I got a car, went to pick farm, collected the things. I was at the roadside, <laughs> waiting for the vehicle. Whenever a vehicle came, I said, pick farm, pick farm, pick farm. And then they would pass. Whenever, pick farm, pick, I was, I saw many because saying pick farm, not knowing I was at pick farm. <laughs> I thought, <laughs> Then somebody told me, oh, but this is pig farm. I said, ah, hey, uh, 37, 37. As soon as I said 37, I got one. And then. <laughs> so when I got there, and later when she delivered, and I told her, oh, she always mentioned it to yeah. tease me, that standing at pig farm, pig farm and looking for a vehicle to pig farm. To pig farm. <laughs> so, um, maybe was quite close to you. Mm -hmm. um, you saw 
her before she fell sick. Um, how did it affect you when she fell sick? How how was it like for you? Hmm. Actually, the husband called me and said, "Baby has to go to Kolebu for a series of tests, so I should come for Kuku." So that that's Mr. Hackman. Yes, Mr. Hackman, the husband. Kuku was then. I think around five months. So I went, we went to Kolebu to see the doctor. He took whatever he had to do, he did it. And then we went back home. Then the next morning, I took Kukwe and sister and the house up here to keep priest. And she continued with the test, series of tests. Holidays, I came with them. And then uh, we took her to Kolebu. Mm. The thing was, the doctor had said she should attend to her. The doctor wrote neurosurgeon, okay. but the doctor was a neurologist. So when we went to that neurologist, he said, ah, I'm not a neurosurgeon, go to. Not knowing that would bring us, yeah. or that would cause us this mystery all these years. So he hurriedly did the surgery and the surgery wasn't where the pain was. It was at a wrong place. Well, you are still with me, the voice of ability and for persons with disability and um, with a special edition of the Helping Hand TV show where we are honoring the memory of Mrs. Christina Hackman. I'll go for a quick commercial break. When I come back, I will continue this interesting discussion with the historian. This is Juliana Anderson. Um, stay tuned, we'll be right back. <laughs> we'll be right back. Hey. <laughs> It took one a na and two a slow repair, a busia, a walk, monk a sip, and then an animal at four person. No, no busy, and the problem one a radiant free. Open pond, Tembrifa. Was she a granana, Tembrifa? A clarina, Tembrifa. Opina, Jay, what is she about? Success is a product of hard and wise work. A 60-second success with the bishop. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to 60-second success with the bishop. Today I want to talk to you about the importance of taking risks, calculated risks. Life is a journey, my friend, a journey that is full of risks. And you have to decide to take calculated risks because it is those who have the audacity to face their fears and take risks who become successful. Life is not always smooth. Life oftentimes is a curved part of turbulence and it demands a lot of diligence so that it can lead to a life of success. Successful people know that in the journey of life, there are times of rain and there are times of sunshine. It is ordinary people who rest because of the rain, but successful people work and they take risks because of the rains. 
Great success only comes to those who are bold enough to take great calculated risks. Thank you. We'll be right back. Yeah, welcome back to the Helping Hand TV show. Um, this is the special edition where we are honoring the memory of um, Mrs. Christina Hackman. And I have a very, very special guest with me, um, a woman I call my mother, Mrs. Juliana Anderson. She's helping us down memory lane. Um, thank you so much, madam. Thank you. <laughs> I, I want us to put something in perspective. Um, baby's first marriage, w would you be okay to tell us what happened? Um, uh, you were about two months then. Two months? You were two months. He had come down okay. briefly and he had, yes, he went back to Sunyani. And he was a uh, lieutenant in a the A lieutenant, army. yes, second lieutenant. But he had done the first lieutenant, he had done the full lieutenant exam ahead of time and he had passed, yes. Oh, wow. So he was just waiting uh, for the right time okay. to, yes, to have it. So I had gone back to Kipkus and my mommy was with a uh, baby okay. and the little baby <laughs> in Accra. Then, I think in, you were born in August, in October, somewhere October, I had a call uh -huh. that this is what had happened. So I had to rush to Accra that very day. I had a, uh, one Mr. Brew, the, he had the phone, at that time we didn't have these mobile phones. Okay. He was working with UAC, or so UTC, so he had the phone. So he had a message, and then he conveyed it to me. Okay. So I had to leave immediately. Go to Accra late in the night, and I rushed home. And I heard the news, what had happened to him. Uh, what I heard was, he had climbed the, is it the, the porch okay. to set up a telephone uh, post. And then he fell. I think he fell down, head down, I guess. Wow. He was right to the hospital, as I was told. And they saw it was very serious. They, so they called for the helicopter. Okay. I had to come. But when the helicopter got there, he had passed on. So that's how. So the body was put on the helicopter, brought down to Accra, because that's where the parents were. So I'm that's sure what happened. I'm sure you with the baby um, throughout that um, marriage that lasted a few months. How did she take it? It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy for her. Mm. Because she had married not quite a year. Wow. And then the husband. It wasn't easy for her. She had it when she, she had it resumed. When she had delivered, she hadn't resumed. Oh, she had snit by that time? She was at snit. Okay. Yeah. So I think she went to town and passed through the office and she got the new Z. Oh. So you can just imagine. The in-laws had come home to tell my mommy what had happened. They said, hey, Chrissy is in town. Baby is in town. How? And not long after, they brought her home from the office. Well, she couldn't come. They brought her home. And the in-laws hadn't left. They were there. And it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy at all for her. Because that was going to come to Accra. And this thing happened. Um, her marriage to Mr. Hackman then would um, sort of give her a bit of joy, a bit of um, happiness. Um, what was your reaction when she told you um, she's found somebody else she's going to be married to? I think we were happy for her. Mm. We were happy for her because when the husband passed on, she said she wouldn't marry again. Yeah. That's what she said. And even her mother-in-law told her, you are young. Maybe, you are young, so you have to. So, do. so when she met Mr. Hackman, we were all happy for her, that she would start life again. Um, baby used to have 
an interesting way of translating um is it fancy words into english <laughs> yes tell <laughs> me some of them hmm when i remember is azukun na minim then che mi yakubui that's a fancy song okay. azukun na che minim then mi yakubui and she, translating it she would say once and i know that i was a truant <laughs> That's how she but I th- the song I'm sure in English would have been I was a sinner. Okay. But because of the words in Fanti, mm. that's how she translated it. Was she being jovial? Oh, yes. Okay. No, no, she enjoyed <coughs> composing sessions. Mm. Mm-hmm. That that side of her cracking jokes and all that. Um I didn't see that she lost it even in her condition. She was still cracking jokes and yes. being jovial and all that. Yes, it's amazing. <laughs> you go to her, and she meets you with a smile. Mm. Always smiling. Always smiling. And she will ask about you if you have a family. She will ask about them and everything. Um, it's a helping hand TV show, special edition. We are honoring the memory of Mrs. Christina Hackman. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
special edition on the Helping Hand TV show. This is a very special edition because um, we are honoring the memory of my late mom, Mrs. Christina Ananswa Hackman. If you are to describe a lady, what words would you use? Very beautiful. She was a lovely lady. She was funny, loving, caring. Always smiling, very intelligent, jovial, welcoming anybody who came her way. She was kind, she was generous, and she was caring. Amongst us we were six uh, girls. Okay. And she was the prettiest. She felt free sharing whatever she had with people. She was generous with everything she had. She was always willing to give. She really gave beyond um, what one would expect. Baby was a jewel God gave us. And God used it to teach us, I think, lessons. Yeah. We will cherish her memories forever. I mean, she cannot be replaced. You know, and, and she will remain in our, in our hearts forever. Babu has left a, a huge legacy. Yeah. We are honoring the memory of my late mom, Mrs. Christina Ananswa Hackman. A real woman of virtue, Mrs. Christina Hackman. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, indeed, this has been a life well lived. Um, Mrs. Christina Ananswa Hackman, as we remember you, we say God bless you, God bless all the people you touched, God bless your family. But this is all time would allow us. And so um, we'll draw the curtains here. But this interview is going to continue next week, same time, same channel. Thank you. My sweet mother, nothing could have prepared me for this moment and no one could have equipped me for this moment. My dear mother, may God keep you in the best places in heaven because you were God's best gift to me on earth. Rest well. My sweet mother, rest well in the loving embrace of our Heavenly Father because you are the most loving earthly mother. God bless you for everything you did for me. Baby, my sweet mother, rest in peace and rise in glory. <laughs>